there's one very interesting event in the Old Testament that typifies this, the focus of my message to a very large extent. And, you know, theologians call this one of the smallest types in the Old Testament because it was summarized in just about four or five verses. But it was so powerful that even Jesus himself referenced it. And that is in the book of Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. Numbers 21. (laughs) Amen. I'll read quickly from verse 5. The Bible says, And the people speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt? Okay. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die? Let's do New King James. It's going to be easier to read that way for you guys to understand quickly. And the people spoke against... Are you still here? If you're here, say amen. Amen. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And our soul loathes in this... Loathes this worthless bread. Verse 6. So the Lord sent what? Are you here? Don't worry, we'll get a higher stand for this TV soon. Bear with us and read from where you are. So the Lord God sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people. And many of the people of Israel died. Verse 7. Therefore, the people, therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall what? Shall live. Verse 9. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. So, and so it was. If a serpent had beaten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he what? He lived. He lived. He lived. So um, let me start from here. How can you now read this and say God cannot kill? But let's leave that. That's not why. That's not the focus of this teaching. Of this teaching. When he looks, he shall what? He shall live. He shall live. It's funny how the Lord Jesus referenced this, and I'm going to get there shortly. But you know, this event was also a shadow. Of salvation in Christ. And I'll explain that shortly. <laughs> God was demonstrating his wisdom here. God was demonstrating his wisdom here. Do you realize that it was a serpent that the devil used in Genesis chapter 3 to orchestrate his, de- his act of deception? From verse 1, the Bible says, Genesis 3 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than every other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And the serpent was possessed of the devil, right? And then the serpent began to speak and spoke to the woman and brought the woman to a point whereby she disobeyed the instruction and ate of the fruit, gave it to the man, ate as well. And they both fell. Instantly, their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked. And when God came, God asked Adam. He said, Adam, where are you? And then he says, we heard the voice. We heard your voice walking in the garden. Or we heard the sound, we heard thy footsteps walking in the garden, and we hid ourselves because we were naked. See what God, meanwhile, when God came, it was the woman that first ate, but when he came, who did he ask for? Adam. When we teach marriage, you will look at why God. So go and marry quick, because you will not, you cannot relate. <laughs> Maybe only Irene can relate. Nobody, if you don't marry, no verse, I don't know. You know, say, the talk say, some of you, if you don't go marry for village, I don't go know. Tolu? <laughs> It was a serpent that was used to orchestrate man's fall that the devil possessed to deceive man. And now God is commanding Moses to... um, There's a backstory to this anyway, because they were in the wilderness. And I think it's Deuteronomy 15 or where is is that? And that reveals that where they were, there were not just only serpents there. There were serpents, there were bees, there were all all kinds of poisonous and venomous stuff that were there. But... The hand of the Lord was consistently protecting and covering 
the Israelites. And then when they began to blaspheme and murmur, God took his hand away and sent the serpents to them. And when they found themselves and, ah, we are wrong, go, what God did was that he told Moses to erect a serpent, a fiery, a brazen serpent. And whoever looks on, upon the serpent shall what? Shall live. What God was doing here was he was making a statement that the same thing, follow me, the same thing that caused your fall will be used as an instrument for your salvation. Just stay with me. Are you still here? Because it was a serpent that the devil used to orchestrate man's fall. And now God is telling Moses, erect a serpent. Whoever looks upon this serpent shall what? Shall live. Shall live. Let me show you something. Listen, you know, we're talking about types and shadows. God hid his salvation plan in types and in shadows all through the Old Testament. It was hidden. Let me show you something. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 7. The Bible speaking says, But we speak the, the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. It says, Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Is that in your Bible? Had they known it, they what? They will not have crucified. Now let's do John 3 from verse 14. You are going to get this now. John 3 from verse 14, we read to verse 16. Thereabout. Andrew, Andrew. Look at now. This is Jesus speaking. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Go to the next verse. Verse 15. That whoever believes in him should what? Not perish, but what? have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life do you get it now God was preaching when he asked Moses to erect a serpent and whoever looks will live whoever looks will live God is wise. He says, Paul said, this wisdom was hidden in a mystery. And so the Bible says, if the princes of this world had known, they will not have crucified the Lord. If the princes, of, because Satan thought he was doing great service to his kingdom. He did not know he was facilitating God's salvation plan. <laughs> did you hear what I said? The devil thought by because now, the Bible says the princes of this world, you need to understand the concept of parallel governments. I wish I had time. That there can be a physical prince in a city called Persia. In the realm of the spirit, there is a direct equivalent, a prince called Persia that resisted Gabriel on his way to meet Daniel. Amen. In Isaiah 14, from verse 12, don't open it, I don't have time. I'm just showing you that there are parallels, parallel governments in the realm of the spirit. That many things happening in the visible realm are actually the product of a spiritual government. Did you hear what I said? And it is, listen, if the kingdom of God, if the kingdom of heaven will advance the will of God, they are going to use men to do it. If the kingdom of darkness will advance the will of the devil, they are going to use men to do it. The answer is simple, and it is in Psalms 115 and verse 16. It says, the, he the earth and um, the heaven, even the heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth has he given unto the sons of men. So if anything will happen in the earth, if any of the governments in, the, in heaven or, in, or from hell, from the devil will advance the cause of their respective kings. Men will be involved. So the princes of this world were being manipulated by the devil to kill the Lord Jesus. They did not know that they were facilitating the plan of God. No wonder the Bible says all things work together. <laughs> For good unto them who love God. Who are the called of his divine purpose. Because the devil thinks that, okay, now that I know about types and shadows, maybe I can be ahead. You still cannot. Because if you are moving and you are moving and you are being powered by purpose, will, listen, that's why you must obey divine leadings and divine instructions. Because God in his wisdom knows how, he's, how he is orchestrating your life in a way that Satan cannot predict your future. 
you are struggling because you are trying to live life on your own terms. That's, what, that's how you left covering. We need to see the wisdom behind divine instruction. He says to them who are the called of his purpose. He is not by them who love God. <laughs> but you must understand that there is a legal and the vital aspect of this. For instance, we all know that we are called to be ministry, but not every believer is doing ministry. Does it, does it make the, the Bible less true? No. There are two aspects to it. Amen. Amen. The Bible calls you a holy nation. It also tells you, be ye holy even as your heavenly father is holy. Why? Because there is a legal aspect of it and there is a vital aspect. Perfect example. In the Nigerian prison today, there are people who are in prison that have long since been, been what's the word now, been discharged and acquitted from prison. But because of the corrupt system that we are in, when one person is discharged legally, the people that... The, <laughs> Authorities have been paid, and they will now, instead of bringing out the person who have been delivered, they will now swap. That's the country you are in. Are you see here? They will. You don't know it happens. You don't know. Ah, so, not be my mouth you hear them. <laughs> Legal and vital. So if that guy is 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 discharged from prison 20 years later he was actually supposed to have been delivered 20 years ago the same way the believer is delivered from the power of the devil but there are still many believers who are oppressed today legal and vital but blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or in the way of the sinners for he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's Psalms 1. Oh, let's start from verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. But his what? His delight is in the law of the Lord, and he in his law meditates he day and night. Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf and whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? We are trying to prosper today without, and we are walking in the way of, of the ungodly. We are trying to prosper today and we are sitting in the seat of the scornful. It does not work like that. God will not use an unrighteous means to bless you. Jesus. Did you hear what I said? God will not use an unrighteous means to bless his people, no matter how desperate you are for money. <laughs> Blessed is the man who walks not. Blessed is the man who stands not. Blessed is the man who sits not. He says, whatever he does shall prosper. Do you know why whatever he does will prosper? It's not just because, oh, you have blessed hands. No. Because what you are doing is, oh, go, give me verse, verse 2 again. I will show you why whatever he does shall prosper. He says, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law meditates he day and night. So your heart has been set on God's purpose. And if God cannot fail, and your life is stirred in the direction of God's purpose, guess who else cannot fail? <laughs> oh, many of us are too wise to be used by God. We are too wise. We have a way we want our life to go. And so God's plan can wait. Many of us are too wise <laughs> to be used of the Lord. We have our plan. <laughs> but there's a way that seems right unto a man. Do you know why it seems right? Because, listen, the most intelligent man can permit, can do permutation and combination and predict the next 10 years. But the most intelligent man does not hold time in his hands. So no matter how much you plan, there's one that is sitting in heaven and he's just laughing. <laughs> he's just laughing. He says, why do the hidden rage or the people imagine a vain thing? Do you know God? <laughs> ah, don't have time again. If the princes of this world had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of hosts, the Lord of glory. So Satan was... Like I told you, parallel government 
was moving them to did you see, see the level <laughs> the level of torture that he went through before Ephanai said it is finished all was fulfilling prophecy all of it the same serpent that caused man to fall in the garden is the same serpent that has become the most vital tool that God used <laughs> in orchestrating salvation so he told Moses, erect the serpent. And whoever looks. This time, in the garden, in the beginning, they looked at a serpent and died. They believed the counsel of a serpent and what? And died. But now, that same serpent that Satan used, Nami Maker. That's what God was saying. So erect it. This time, whoever looks on it shall live. And Jesus said that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so also, even so, will the Son of Man, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Verse 15 again. That whoever, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but what? But have eternal life. The punishment for looking upon in quotes for believing the counsel of the first serpent was eternal death God was speaking to man from Genesis 2 and verse 16 to verse 17 that the Lord God began to command the man that of every tree in the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil do not eat of it for in the day that you eat of it what you shall surely die and when they ate it, I've said this hundred million times, it even looks as though they became more alive. And that's the danger of being an unbeliever. The unbeliever is a walking dead. It's a walking corpse. Because Adam still lived for over 900 years after he died. He had died though. God, the maker of life has pronounced you dead. But you still did things. <laughs> For another 900 plus years. I don't know if, if, if I was one, I would prefer to just die in spirit, soul, and body complete. Let me. Which, which, which thing be that? <laughs> that you live and walk this earth, make all the money you can make, travel to everywhere on your bucket list. I'm not saying it's bad, but I mean, you will explore pleasure to its peak and then stand before Jesus and he will tell you I don't know you you are dead <laughs> eternal death there are many people that will not know they are dead until the day Jesus comes and they stand before him because the ticket to enter heaven as important as good works are good works have something else that they guarantee in heaven yeah. But it does not guarantee your entrance into heaven. <laughs> are you with me? For instance, good works are not the prerequisite for salvation. They are the product of salvation. Marvel, does you understand that? They are not the prerequisite. They are the what? The product. Because the Bible speaking in the scripture you read in Ephesians 2 and verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus for good works. So we were created for good works. We were saved for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. They are the products of our salvation. But when we stand before Jesus on that day, the ticket is that there's life in your spirit. That's the, that's the ticket. To enter. After the life test, <laughs> after the life test is over, we'll now look at, okay, Let's now reward for what you did in your earthly body. The for the unbeliever, <laughs> there's no need for any discussion. 